Pastor John, many believers today know that they should be involved in a church, but they don't know what to look for in finding a healthy church. What then would be your advice biblically on what people should look for when trying to find and be a part of a healthy biblical church? Real, really simple question. What they're looking for is a leadership that teaches the Bible, where the Bible reigns supreme, where biblical inspiration, inerrancy, and authority is ruling the church. And here's the simple reality. Christ is the head of the church. We know that because it's repeated in the, in the New Testament. So how does Christ mediate his rule in the church? The way any leader would, through his word, right? He leads by his word. So his word is scripture. So where you have a church that handles the word of God accurately, you have Christ mediating his rule in the church. And I'll tell you how you'll know that's happening. You'll know it not only by the doctrine and by the fact that they open the Bible and they explain what it means, but you'll know it, and this is a surprising answer, you'll know it by their love for each other. Because the Bible says, Paul the Apostle said, the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart. So when you're looking for a real church, you're looking past the doctrine. You're looking past the theology. How much affection do these people have for each other? How much love do they demonstrate? Because the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart. The Word of God purifies the heart, and what is set loose in the heart is the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. You know, people would say, well, I want to find a church that's doctrinally sound. Well, that's fine, but it's got to be beyond that. That doctrine has to have a dramatic impact on the heart. Let me say it another way. Uh, Soft preaching makes hard people. Hard preaching makes soft people. Unleash the Word of God and watch it purify people. And out of that purity comes love and affection. And you will find that church, a church full of love among the people for each other as well as for the Lord. So do they handle the Word of God accurately? Do they exalt Christ? And is it marked by sound doctrine? But beyond that, do you, do you see demonstrably before you affection between the people who are a part of that church, love for each other. And that means they minister to each other with the gifts and the one another's. Yeah, no, that's so good and so clear. Now, one of the questions in that regard that I often hear is, why then do I need to be a member of a church? You're saying find one that is doctrinally sound and there's a love evidence amongst believers there. Why do I need to be a member of that environment? Why is it so important? Because, first of all, you need to get as close to that love as you can. You need to be a part of that love. You need to be wrapped up in that love. Secondly, you need to be as close to sound doctrine as possible because that creates the certainties and conviction that cause you to grow spiritually and make you effective as a Christian. And then beyond that, you need to be shepherded. You know, Jesus looked at the people in Jerusalem and he said they're like sheep without a shepherd. What a disaster. That is what leadership in the church does. They're shepherds. Feed the flock of God. Feed and lead the flock of God. So you want to find leadership that cares for you. You desperately need that. You need shepherds in your life. And you also need accountability, right? I know why people don't join a church. They don't join a church because they don't want somebody getting too close to their life. They want to maintain certain freedoms. They want to maintain certain anonymity. In the the, sort of the pragmatic church growth movement, they they constantly say, "You, you don't want to have people turning to each other and shaking hands. You don't want to have people standing up and announcing they're new. This intimidates people. Well, of course, if they they don't want anybody speaking into their lives. So you need that. That's not a threat. That's the pathway of holiness. And just one quick response to that. When I first came to Grace over 50 years ago, you know, I said, the Bible says if you sin, you need to be confronted, then confronted by two or three witnesses, and then we tell the whole church to confront you about your sin. People said, if you do that, you'll empty the church. Just the opposite happened because people wanted to be in a place where other people cared about their lives. They need that support, that prayer, and that communion of the saints. Oh, man. So helpful. And I think so clarifying for many people. You know, I often talk with different students or even adults who will say, well, what's the difference between going to church or meeting at a Bible study with two of my friends where two or more are gathered, right? But you're saying, no, you need to have accountability. You need to be shepherded. And you need to do align yourself closely along convictional lines. And that only happens as a member of the Can church. Can I throw in one more thought? Please. Look past the music. Yeah. Look to the pulpit. 
Right. Look to the doctrine and look to the affection and look for a place where all generations are living out their Christian life, where the older women are teaching the younger women, the older men are teaching the younger men, and there's a full range of the body of Christ operating. Mm, that's so helpful. Thank you so much, Pastor John. My pleasure.